My name is Dr. Jonathan Hargreaves. I'm from the Computational Acoustics Special Interest Group. And today I'm really happy to be talking to Dr. Ana Luisa Maldonado from the acoustics team at Arup. So, uh, Ana, would you mind telling us a bit how you're involved with acoustics? So I'm an aeroacoustician by background with some specialization in numerical methods and mechanical engineer as well. And now I'm part of the acoustics team at Arup and we're trying to improve our current methods. And how does our SIG specialism computational acoustics contribute to the goal of Arup and its clients? So currently the projects that we currently have, they are much more complex than in the past. So you need a more holistic approach. It's not just one discipline or another. Sustainability includes many of them. And they're not projects and problems that we can deal with using simple calculations. We need to be calculated by a computer in the best efficiency that we can. And then we also need to find a way to communicate. So oralization, visualization and other methods to be able to communicate to members of the public and stakeholders is a big part of it. So I cannot see uh, us doing anything very exciting without computational acoustics these days. So it's really interesting to hear you talk about this human centric approach because computational acoustics sounds like a very dry mathematical programming kind of discipline, but actually almost ironically, it become, comes into its own because we want to present things to, to people and, and allow them to experience them. Are there any areas within computational acoustics that you think are seriously lacking where if some improvement was made by academic research and that could have a transformational effect on industry practice? Over the years, so at the beginning of acoustics, most of the problems were simpler. But nowadays, you need a better way of modeling the source or calculating the source numerically. And even the way that you propagate brings its challenges due to, for example, weather impacts. And So we're kind of dealing with these, these, these two scales of problem here, which is the modeling the source generation in quite a lot of detail, and then the sort of long range propagation, perhaps in a different way. Is that, is that true? Yes. So you, you have this multi-scale problem on one side and well, different problems require different solutions. So mm. multi-scales is one of them. The other one is their acoustics when everything is coupled. Are there any any kind of exciting new capabilities that would that would make a big change that no one's been able to develop yet? Well, so if we think about something that would be very useful, but also equally challenging, is an ability to deliver accurate, calibrated um, oralizations, three-dimensional, um, in which the, the user could change by, him, you know, move around and then turn in and off different sources. And that is not simple. It mm. brings lots of benefits, but we really need the support of this network for that. And a bonus would be even if the user could experience that anywhere. So not just in our sound lab rooms, but from home or and we can think about many challenges, of course, including the real time calculation algorithms, a very efficient and accurate way to do that and, and many others. So that would be the ideal. OK, yeah, so we've got loads of things. We've got kind of the, the algorithms, we've got the fast hardware, we've got the integration of them and with the audio and then potentially even augmented reality. We're we talking about here sort of yeah. things. Yes, yeah, exactly. Do you think it's mostly about algorithms or, or hardware or a bit of a mixture? Well, I think that it's a bit of both because we're not in the eighties where the existence of computational power was, um, what was lacking, you know, there is a lot of hardware that, that can be used and what we need is software that can make the most of this hardware that have a good scalability curve. Uh, we need people that can actually program in distributed or shared memory devices as we have better hardware. We can also model more complex problems and then we'll need different algorithms. Mm. So I think it's a combination of both. Um, and in terms of the actual UCAN priorities, um, are there any that you think computational acoustics would particularly contribute to? Yeah, so having a look at the UCAN priorities, they, they're very tightly aligned to what we're doing at Arup, and it would be impossible to cite just one or two of them because many of them are very important. However, the underlying assumption there is that if we don't develop numerical methods and computational acoustics or acoustics, most of them you cannot do it. 
so if we take as an example the study that we've done on health impacts for Yaza, what we use there is simulated aircraft that has you know, a very robust numerical modeling mm -hmm. underneath it. So I think that computational acoustics is essential for most of the priorities that I've seen here. And then the other big theme on the computing side we're seeing is, of course, AI, machine learning, artificial intelligence. And um, I don't know, do you think that can help with the kind of workflows that you're doing? Absolutely. So we are looking into machine learning and AI here. Um, mainly what we've looked so far is for parametric studies or to automate processes. We are very interested in that. And I know the one that I've talked to some of your colleagues often about is simplification of CAD and building information models for acoustic modeling, which sounds very tedious to do by hand and, and hopefully we can oh, do yeah. a little bit better. Thank you, Anna. So that's been really interesting for me and I hope it has been for everyone else who's watching this as well. So thank you.